Hello, good afternoon, Brother West. Thank you so much for taking some time to be with us here today. I know you got some classes there at Harvard. I really appreciate your time. How are you doing today, sir? Brother, I'm just blessed to be in conversation with you, though, man. But I want to begin by saluting your artistic <laughs> work, man. You, you're a giant, though, man, uh, in house music, tech, techno, across the board, funk. I can go on and on. I know you're from Detroit, so you got to jump start in life. We understand that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the same time, what you did with uh, Brother Brandon's uh, uh, Got That Hope, man. Whew. Thank you so much. All Thank you so much. Into that. Moving Thank in that thing. I just want to salute you, though. I really do, though, man. Thank you so much. Many people maybe not, not know, but you started a new house music record label. There you got the Purple Music and House of West, which I was very uh, privileged to be able to do a remix for you. Uh, Brandon Lucas, Got That Hope. You yeah, having some words from you and Like a Star. We put on that remix. Uh, you wanna, could you tell us a little bit about your involvement in music? And uh, and your love for house music, actually. Well, you know, my brother, I consider the black musical tradition as the greatest modern tradition uh, uh, that confronts catastrophe unflinchingly with creativity and compassion. I don't know of any other tradition where a people have been on intimate terms with calamity and barbarity and in response generate unbelievable creativity and compassion you see so that in the face of tear here comes a freedom psychically musically in the face of trauma here comes some healing in the face of hatred organized hatred personal hatred here comes some love warriors all the way back from the spiritual to john coltrane's love supreme and it spills over in all its various forms you see so that house music tech funk spirituals blues gospel i'm a product of the black church shiloh baptist oh, church. me too me too Absolutely. Me too. it all flows in its in, in, in its diversity and variety within the black musical tradition and it's not just a function of skin pigmentation you see it's a function of vision courage integrity discipline and being committed to something bigger than you the music is always bigger than you and your mama is grander than you. Freedom is bigger than you. So that it takes the best of who you are. And that's what it is to be in the black musical tradition. Radical love and freedom and radical freedom and love rooted in the best of black folk, but it's global. So the R-O-O-T-S, your roots take you to R-O-U-T-E-S. It can even take a, a black brother from Detroit to Bali. That's the truth. Same brother wherever you go. I was just making spot checking yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really, it's really incredible when we look at the cultural impact of uh, the African diaspora and the black community in America on musical trends. I mean, if you look at again, we got jazz, soul music, uh, gospel music, rock and roll, techno. You know, so often it's very much these in current contemporary times we're constricted to the idea that black music is R&B and hip hop music, but we're actually the um, ignition, the igniter behind almost every cultural trend of the 20th century. And I think it's so important for people, especially today, to realize that uh, electronic music is also part of the black story. Um, I read a really great article the other day that spoke about uh, there's um, very, uh, the part of the propagation of electronic music was also behind uh, the same propagation of soul music. There was a few places that you could uh, make noise in, in many ways, right? And that's church and, uh, and, and at some point clubs. So electronic music was born out of the space of like many, many oftentimes when you, let's say, living in, in a small compact spaces or not having the ability to have a garage, you know, or or many other outlets to produce music, you know, you look for different places to perform and have that able ability to spread the soul, to have sound. And then these places became our churches, you know, and that's how this music was born and rise. Um, I guess through uh, the article was saying, uh, through the gentrifications in Detroit, Chicago, and New York, and many places that um, gave the freedom for us to express in these, uh, these kind of, let's say, um, churches of dance, um, it had also had a, a negative effect 
on the amount of artists being involved in um, in uh, dance music and techno and house of, of the black uh, community or kind of uh, heritage. And um, I wanted to hear your thoughts on um, kind of inspiring the youth of tomorrow to also realize again that this is their music and it is a culture that we invented and also very much want them to feel uh, they have a place in. Is that something that you're looking to do with uh, House of uh, West? And um, and uh, yeah, 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 House of West, sorry. No, I mean, you know, Brother Brandon, uh, he has a grand vision. Brother Brandon Lucas has a magnificent lens through which he looks at the world. and he. He himself is rooted and immersed in this same black musical tradition as you and I. And he recognizes that you see, black music has always been nourished in a context in which people could be themselves. They could be free. You remember Sly Stone, thank you for letting me be, be myself. <laughs> yes, sir. So that, so that the church was a place where black folk could be themselves you know for over 200 years we couldn't worship god without white supervision we had to steal away at night join hands in the ring shout lift our voices with the anthem of black folk lift every voice That's and in insane. doing that you could have your freedom your humanity affirmed even though your humanity was being trashed outside of that space and you see so you go from that particular moment in the ring shout in the creeks to the basement for techno exactly. music you see, exactly, it's exactly. the lineage. See, for me, when I was coming up, it was the garage with the purple light on, slow dancing to the mighty Dell, stay in my oh. corner. You see what I mean? It was James Brown, there it is, soul power, and, and a new day, and mother popcorn, and so forth. But in those contexts, we could be free, we could be ourselves. And and and, and when you're free and you're, you're yourself, it is not cerebral in a narrow sense. It is visceral and cerebral. Black music is intelligent, it's brilliant, but it's also connected to heart, mind, body, soul. So you can move your body. You can stylize space and time with the way in which you groove and stay with the time. And you see, to be human at its deepest level, because that's what black music's about, to be human. To be human at its deepest level is to be in time and space and use time as a way of ensuring that you can flower and flourish with your soul, heart, mind, and body in time. So the rhythms, the dissonance, the melodies, the harmonies, it can come from technology, it can come from an isolated voice, it can come from a whole host of things, but you're using this to deal with how do you move through time. And you can imagine, you can get, you can get complicated on this thing because it's Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S versus Kronos. Kronos is mechanical time, everyday time. Kairos will infuse meaning in certain moments in time. So you go to that, you go to house party, you go to techno music, you go to the church. Those are going to be meaningful moments in which you are free and put your whole self and body in it. But you got to be on the move. That's kinesis, K-I-N-E-S-I-S. -S. Kinesis means keep on pushing, keep, keep the groove, keep, keep the pushing beat on. going. Ain't no stopping us now. Yes. In there's kenosis, brother, K-E-N-O-S-I-S. -S. Kenosis is what? Empty yourself. You got to give of yourself. If you're going to be cold and distant and indifferent, you're in the wrong space. House party means you got to break loose. You got to give yourself, empty yourself, stay in motion so we can create a meaning, a moment that's so meaningful that we got to come back next week and say, Brother Seth, we thank you for your genius, brother. You keeping this tradition going in terms of how we move through time until there's death. I, I, I got another thing for you. I had a... Um, a keynote uh, speech and talk kind of very much like we're having now with uh, Chuck D from Public Enemy. We had uh, a few it was a few years ago at uh, IMS in in LA, and uh, we were speaking about how, um, in many ways, uh, black culture and music at times has been hijacked. He said uh, at some point with hip hop culture, there was a definitive change in uh, the topics 
in which they use to choose. I mean, at some point we had, uh, as, as Europe calls it, black music and soul music in America that was all about keep, keeping the black community together and informing positive ideals. At some point in the 90s after hip hop was born, uh, there was a choice through many record executives to um, kind of, let's say, push a narrative or a certain um, sound within black music that uh, that was, I think, in many ways, a, uh, a way to suppress the power and the soul of our music and also to create different uh, images of our um, of our culture and uh, to suppress us as a cultural as, as a whole. You know, this is kind of, let's say, the uh, the uh, over um, emphasis and uh, and uh, on, on gangster rap. Uh, I think uh, today and, and you know, there's no there is no. Um, I often bring up this track that had came out a few years ago. I'm in love with the Coco that was uh, played on popular radio that literally gave the recipe to make crack music, uh, to make how to make crack. Um, basically, there's no, uh, it costs a lot of money to put this music on, on the radio. And there are some, uh, some powers that be that also kind of push that narrative to society. And house music, uh, which was born in mostly black and Latino communities, in uh, the 80s and 90s uh, has now uh, kind of come um, to be mostly Europeanized in many ways. And, uh, you know, and there's been some great developments because of that. However, at the same time, um, the narrative in which people understand and hear that uh, techno music had come from Detroit, Chicago and New York and from people of color uh, has been lost in the uh, in the historical narrative of what is happening. Um, well, I just want to leave this as a final thought. How do you feel as a way that we can claim the positivity back in our music and uh, show people in the world that, and, and for future generations, that um, black music has always been a music of positivity and, and change and to bring about um, the goodwill in our culture as well as uh, the cultures around the world. Mm-hmm. No, I appreciate that question, though. It's, it's fascinating. You and Chuck D together, though, man. I spent good time with him. He used to lecture in my classes. I love that, brother. Yeah, two towering really figures together. Talk, yeah. But we got to keep in mind, my brother, anytime you have something so rich and so deep that has to do with what it means to be human, everybody wants to get in on it. Everybody wants Everybody want love. Everybody wants freedom. Everybody wants affirmation. Everybody wants to be able to move and groove. So it goes back to the very beginning, though, man. Black music was hijacked the first time uh, somebody on the other side of the plantation heard the black voice at the creek. From the very beginning. The first mass entertainment in the history of America was what? Minstrels. 20,000 people would show up for what? For white brothers and sisters to paint themselves black so they can act black and be freer than their narrow selves, you see. So in one sense, it was putting down, but in another sense, it was freeing them up. So black music has always had this liberating effect because it's so sweet. It's so For all rich. people. It's so rich. You could be in South Africa, you can be in Guatemala, you can be in Brazil, you can be in Bali, you can be in Russia. When you hear David Ruffin's delicate voice with the Temptations, when you hear Clyde Stubberfield get the drummer song with James Brown, when you hear Johnny Hartman blowing with Coltrane, He's singing Cold Train on the saxophone. It's touching one's soul. So the black music has always been hijacked. I mean, Pat Boone made what? Millions and millions and millions of dollars and 95% of his songs were covers of black folk. Because he knew where to go, but you had a larger market. You had a much larger market, you see? And so- I got everybody. <laughs> absolutely, you see? So in that Elvis. sense, the hijacking needs to be acknowledged and, and, and we got to be, you know, you have to be accountable, but it's a kind of flattery and compliment on the one hand, but the white supremacist structures that produce and distribute and, 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 and make it possible to, 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 to make available the music, most of the big money still is in white hands, you see, so that, you know, you could be a Sam Cooke, one of the coldest ever and still not have as much money as the person who owns the studios or what was dennis from uh from the temptation was he, he was on the street yeah you ain't lying man absolutely yeah. we have so many you know great artists who ended up like that 
Because or, the thing the is that, quest, they don't own any of their masters. You don't own any of the masters. Thank God for the great prince saying, look, yeah. I'm a slave. I'm yeah. the freest slave since Frederick Douglass. Because my music is going to take you to some places that put a smile on George Clinton's face on the mothership. <laughs> but I'm still a slave to the company until I make my break. Because you still got a world you're dealing with, even given the music that we're producing. So the important thing to keep, keep in mind is, is that the uh, even as we're very attuned to the structures of oppression when it comes to black music and the forms of hijack, that in the end, it's the music that's the fundamental point of reference that keeps us focused on our creativity and our dignity and our integrity. That's the crucial thing. I mean, look at the Korean brothers and sisters these days. Oh, Korean rhythm and blues, you listen to Urban Sakapa, you listen to some brother Sam, brother Kim, they sound in mellow. You know they listening to the Delphonics and the Dramatics and the Whispers and maybe greeted and Enchantment. You know they've been listening to the Miracles and the Temptations because they got that, that, they got that tone, they got that sound, but they're doing their Korean thing. I mean, my beloved daughter just wrote a thesis on the Korean appropriation of black music at, uh, at, at, at Princeton. It's a fascinating thing because it, it's, it is very black, but it's also Korean. That's fine. They Koreans got soul. Same with the Japanese. They they got they exactly. just put it out there. Exactly. <laughs> BTS, let BTS go on and do its thing. Do a little dynamite, let it do its little thing. A fair dynamite. amount of oppression they as got well. Some dynamite form too. Yeah, that's the tr that's the truth. That's the truth. There's also that kind of the there is a um, correlation there of the oppressions of society in Korea, and I think also their love for soul music, same in Japan. But Dr. West, with all this, I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today and giving us your love and light and knowledge uh, for future generations and everyone here to, uh, re to hear and, and understand and feel during Black History Month is so important, I think, for your message to be heard, especially in the times we've been facing of oppression. And uh, I think right now more than ever, it's an incredible, for, uh, an incredible possibility for uh, people to understand and see that the music that they hear and that they appreciate every day is our music. And it's a music that we want everybody to enjoy together. And it's full of love and, uh, and compassion and hope. So thank you again, Dr. West. Are there any final thoughts you'd like to leave I us with? I just want to say, man, in the language of John Coltrane, you are a real force for good and a grand exemplar of the highest levels of excellence in the black musical tradition straight out of Detroit Motown. Boom. <laughs> Detroit is how we get down. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Dr. West, you keep doing it to it like there ain't nothing to it, brother. So thank you so much. I'll let you get back to your class. I know there's a lot of bright minds waiting to hear some more of your, your great words. So thank you again, and I hope to see you soon, Doctor. You say well. Love and respect you, brother. Love and respect you, brother. Righteous, brother. Thank you so much.